Hello, I'm Erin Halverson with Rag Rags by Erin. Um, if this is your first time joining me, I appreciate you joining me. And if you're a returner, I really appreciate that as well. So uh, make sure you subscribe if you like this video. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Um, most of my videos are rag rugs. I do some baskets and some other things. But I'm going to do something a little different still with the same technique. Uh, we're going to be using sheet yarn. I'm doing this because I thought maybe some of you would like a little quick gift that you could use as a stocking stuffer. Um, that you could either make yourself or that you could even do it with a younger person and they could maybe be giving these gifts and you could stack them up and give it multiple ones and put them in a little tissue paper um, and then you know just put a little string around them and you could give you know two three or four of them with different bright colors or you know, neutral colors if that's what you prefer so these are the circle ones I'm not going to be making those today um, I thought I was originally going to be showing you and I thought about making them with circles um, you can see that these are little scrubbies but they're I used the sheet and I mixed this um, nylon netting that is extremely inexpensive. I bought it at Walmart. I'm going to show you how to cut that. Um, I also tried it with tool, which is also very, very cheap if you buy it by the yard, like at Walmart. And this is a finer texture. So if you've got delicate skin um, or you're just not looking for as much abrasive, you may want to try that. I particularly like the netting. So I'm going to be using that and showing you how to do it with that. This is a real simple process. You can do the circles if you decide yourself. Um, I may do another video in the future on that. But I'm going to focus on the rectangles because uh, it's easier and more straightforward. And I didn't think it would be quite as difficult to teach. And this is something perfect for a total beginner. You can see the scrubby in there. But I want to show you. This is one that is doesn't have a border on it. See how this is the size of that without the border? If you put a border around it, can you see how much bigger it becomes? This one is, I'm going to show you how to finish it. Um, this one I'm going to show you when we get ready to uh, put the border around so you can see how to do it. So I have it in different stages. See how much bigger it makes it um, if you do that. And you can do multicolors. I have some that are actually put back that have multicolors. So you can just use your scraps and your leftovers. And I don't think it's as important that you use sheets on this. You know I'm a big sheet person um, as opposed to just using scraps. But this might be a wonderful thing for you to be able to use um, bits of your stash, uh, your old cache of fabric that you might have had from quilting or something else. Just make sure it's been washed once or twice and run through the dryer before you use it so you won't have a problem. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, my crochet bag that I have on my channel, I have lots of different designs and whatnot, but you can see how it holds so many things in here. But I wanted to um, I just keep everything here together. And what's the tools that you're going to need is a good pair of scissors. These are my favorite ones. Um, you're going to need a tapestry needle or a yarn needle and this has a wide eye. This one's a number 13. You can do a 13 or a 16. I really prefer the 13 but you can't always find it. So and you can see that it has just the dull tip on it right here and nice big wide eye. So this is a, a metal one. Don't make it a plastic one because they break. And here's the crochet hook that I'm going to be using today. This is a pea. I also sell this on my website. It has made my life so much easier. Um, not near the pain and difficulty involved um, with my wrist and arm when I do a lot of crocheting. I have some issues. Okay, so this is the netting that you buy. This is only a, a yard of it here. Um, and it's all folded up. It came like this and I, I folded it up. And then I just held it together with um, clothes pins. So it wouldn't unravel and come undone. You can see it's not perfect. And this is only one yard. And I'm going to cut two pieces at the same time to show you how simple this is. I did three yards, I think, the first time I started doing this. And I cut all three of them at the very same time just by folding it up and then cutting it. So even though it looks thick, you can cut it very easily. Now, I did my strips about um, an inch and a half to two inches. Um, of the sheet yarn that I made and on another video you can see I have several videos on cutting a pillowcase in one long strip and uh, making sheet yarn on my channel but uh, you can view those ch those videos separately so this I made this smaller so whatever size you decide to go with um, on your sheet yarn I would just I think I'm going to sneeze so I'll try not to um, if you go with a little bit smaller on this because I found it was too much if you put too much in it you know just it was too rough so see how this isn't even exactly correct 
Um, I'm just going to cut this off. I Then you have enough of it to work with. I may have to cut more before it's finished. And I already have a piece already cut. You can see there's like these little pieces of stuff here. So you may not want to be doing that in your bed um, while you're sitting there watching TV. If you're picky like me, sleeping in something like that doesn't feel so hot. But um, you might just go outside and cut quite a bit of it at one time. So this is how you're going to go ahead and get started. Um, after you have some sheet yarn made, I just put them together. The sheet yarn. I'm going to show you how to um, attach the um, nylon netting to each other in just a few minutes when I get to the next point. So you're going to make it, um, you know, have about a foot left over, a, a little tail, and you're going to make a slip um, slip stitch, a slip knot. You're going to take the long end and cross it over the short end, and you're going to push it through the hole. I show this in many videos. There's other ways to make slip knots. Whatever works for you, this isn't the only way. Okay, and this is just how I like to do it. Then you put your hook in and make sure that your tail, the short end, is being held down here with the back side of your hook. Okay, you tighten it up just a little bit. You don't want to go too, too tight um, because you've got to have to go back through that hole. And now you're just going to do eight chain stitches. And to do a chain stitch, you see how I like how this nice long choke um, throat on this is without choking it up too much and you've got this to be able to hold in your hand and this is that uh, cherry hook that you have on my site that if you're interested it just fits so great. You cross over from the back and then you pull your sheet yarn off holding both of them together. Cross over from the back pull it off. It's two, three, cross over, four, Five, six, seven, and this can be done with any length. So if you like it bigger or smaller, by all means, just do it that way. Okay, so there you have a, a chain stitch of eight chain stitches, and um, on my channel I also show you how to make a single crochet and it starts off with a chain stitch so if you want to view it in a slower fashion you can just go to my channel and see it there so then you are always going to here you were crocheting like this you're going to go from right to left you're going to turn it just like when you're starting a runner rag rug and you're not going to go into the hole that you're in there's the hole that you're in here is the um, next hole you're going to go into you're going to go into that hole or stitch and you're going to grab your material they say yarn over when I watch other videos. And now you've got two on there. You cross over and you pull it off. Pull them both off. Go into the next hole. Go in. Yarn over. You have two on there. One, two. Cross over and pull them both off. Okay, so into your hole. Cross over. Pull them both off. That's three. I'm going to go slow again. I think maybe I'm hurrying too much. I try to do it sl enough time so you don't have to rewind your video. And if you do have to rewind it, you don't have to do it many times. Pull them both off. There's one of two ways to grab this tail that's left. Okay, now I want to show you how we come to the end of this. I did this a little different. I don't do it the same way I attach the sheet yarn because it just didn't work. It was too fragile. So all I do is I take both pieces together, you know, line them up, another end of it. In fact, maybe I should pull one more out, one more stitch out, so you can have more length. I'm going to see if you can see it there. My fingers are holding it there so you can see. I just don't know what kind of lighting you're looking at. Put them together and go down where it's comfortable in your hand and just kind of cross over and knot it kind of like a slip stitch only you don't leave the hole I mean you don't leave the hole to start it with and see there it is just a little knot don't overly pull it okay and then you do have some left over I end up cutting that off off and on 
um, depending on. But it's it's delicate, so you kind of just kind of try to work it in and see how it goes. All right, so we're going to go back and finish all the way up what we were doing. You go into the next hole, cross over, grab both pieces of material. I see you're getting to the knot. And then I see I've got it all together, both ends, they're all together. Right here. Can you see them? Just don't worry, just keep keep grabbing them. Because they're so thin, they just don't make a difference. It doesn't seem to cause any kind of an issue. And then if there's something that sticks out at the end, I just trim it off. I don't worry about it. Well, I say I don't worry about it, but look at there. We've got a little bit of an issue. Let me see. Okay. And just you have to make adjustments. Go in, grab the material, cross over, and pull them both off. Okay, here's your last hole right here. You see that? Right there. We go into the last hole. Grab your material. And pull it off. Okay, so you've completed that row. And then the next thing we're going to do, and see there's like a little knot there, so we're going to end up, end up cutting that off or grabbing it, seeing if we can grab that. And I want you to see it because you were walking around. See, this one happened to have a little bit of this. We're going to hide that in the next row. Don't worry. Okay, no worries on any of this. Remember, it's a rag rug. Now we're going to do one chain stitch up. Cross over and pull it through. That gets you ready to be in line for the next one. You flip your work and you're going to go back down and do the same thing. This is the interesting part. This is where the first hole is right here when you're going back down. So go into the hole, just do the exact same thing, cross over. You have both pieces of material there, pull them both off. And here we're going to do is we're going to hide that piece Try to attempt to hide that piece right there. Go into this next hole. You think you're seeing that good, Mr. Cameraman? Mm -hmm. All right. Go into the hole. Grab your material. And see how it's there. I'm going to make sure I kind of just grab it and keep it hidden. Might take. Grab them both off. The same stitch. Now see it's there. So I'm going to go into the next hole. Which here is the next hole. I'm going to grab my material and see how it's still kind of hidden, cross over, there we go, it's gone, go into the hole, I'm going to get to the next end and show you one more time how to go up to the next level, you're going to do five to seven rows, I'll count mine, I don't remember how many rows when I get there, I'll count the completed one and let you no, so a lot of you are very exact. You want to follow exactly what I've done. And some of you adapt all the way. And I'm kind of an adapter too. I'm going to stop and add one more piece of uh, one that I've already got cut. So you can see me adding it again. Other videos I have show you how to add the sheet yarn, which is done a little differently. See, they're both here. You add them together. Knot it. Pull it some, but don't pull it too hard because I've had it snap. Okay, if it snaps, just try again. No worries, it's all just rag rugs. Here you go, go into the next hole. Same exact thing we've been doing. Almost to the end. we got one more hole. Make sure you don't just grab that. See how there's one piece? Go into this right here where there's two because it's going to make it more secure. See, this is where you think you're going to grab. Make sure you grab in here so it's more secure. You go into your hole, grab your material, cross over, pull it off, and then you're going to do one chain stitch to go to the next level. Cross over and pull it through. Flip your work. You can flip it either way, whichever feels better to you. And then you're going to continue on. Okay, so this is the starting of this. 
Okay, so I'm going to switch over to one that we're already going. Another great thing would be on this is you could um, take a different color um, and use like this color to go around the outside of it to uh, show it off um, by adding that color there at the corner. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use the same one that I've already got. So here's the... Now what I did differently when I got to this is I had a little bit left over, you can see. And this is what I did every time. Um, I gave several of these away already. I've got this left over. I'm not going to add any more of this. I'm just going to just finish it off with this. So I'm not. I'm going to keep using what's left on here, but I'm not going to add any more as I go around the outside. Now this one didn't have a border, okay? And you'll be able to see how I finish it without a border or with a border when you watch in just a minute when I get to the end of the video. Um, however, this is going to be how you would add the border, how you go all the way around with a single crochet. So you come to the corner, and you're not going to add any more of this. I'm going to go into that hole one more time, the same hole. See, you can see that I'm already in that hole. I'm going to go in one more time into that hole. like that. So now I'm, I'm going to be working down the side. Okay, so we're going to be bordering it to make it just to look a little bit more polished and finished. Okay, so we're going to continue on down and you're just going into the holes and see how it's almost gone there and just keep going. Go into, find find a hole to go into, and you're just going to do a single crochet. Okay, we're going to pause just a minute and come right back, and I'll show you how to get around your corners and how to finish it. Okay, see you in a moment. Okay, we're back, so exactly where we left off. We're going to go into this corner. Now, on this one here, I only put two times into the same hole on the corner. On this one, I'm going to do three, so you can see the look of the difference between going two times into the same hole and three times. So this one's going to be three times. So we're going to go into that corner hole, which will hide. That's where you originally started your rug. I mean, not your rug. That's what I mean most of the time. You're a little um, scrubby. You're going to do the exact same stitch. That's one time. I'm going to go back into that same hole. Grab your material. It's still a single crochet, but just going back into the same hole. And I'm going to do it one more time. I did two on the other one. And this gives a more of a point. Uh, it just depends on what you like, whether you like the more rounded edges. Okay, in a minute you'll get to see that when we've moved away from it. You're going to continue to go in and go around. We're doing the border. Again, you could do this with a contrasting color or the same color. Um, it'd also be very nice just to use different colored scraps of material that are left over. And you're just going into the hole. And this is where you had your chain stitch. So this will kind of hide the beginning chain stitch um, if you go around that. And it will look just a little bit nicer than the way... Okay, we're going to come down here doing the same chain stitch in the hole. Grab the material. Got two pieces. Take it off. Both of them off. Now here's your hole. The corner hole. I'm going to go three times in there. So one... back into the same hole, two, and this is three. Okay, so this is what, let me, let me do one or two more down here on the side so you can see that corner a little better. You could do this with an end hook and do like inch and a quarter to inch and a half. Um, and do a little bit thinner one if you prefer. I want, I want to move away from that corner enough so you can see what the corners look like if you do three stitches. So this is what the corners look like if you do three stitches as opposed to these were two stitches in each corner. Not a lot difference, but it's just personal preference. So whatever you like. If you like that look of the two, this would be the three stitches in the corners. This is two. Okay, so just, you know, do what you'd like. It's not a... a 
people have I have people write to me all the time, well I do this and I do that. And I do like actually getting your videos and hearing because you teach me lots of things and you help me learn new things. But, uh, you know, it just comes down to personal preference. And if you watch my videos as they go along, they kind of progress and they change as I learn things as well. So here you, you're coming. This was your last corner that you were in that we went all the way around. I only did two here, but this is where you would be ending all the way over here. You started here going around your border all the way around and you would come over here. So now we're at this corner and I'm just for time's sake just going to show you how to finish it. I put my crochet hook back in. I'm going to do one more in the same hole partially because I don't like that knot. It's going to be a place that I don't want to see. So I want to do one more and that will help hide it. Okay and what I do is I pull make this bigger and you pull your sheet yarn through so this is a whole piece of sheet yarn so it's really long it happens to be it just happened to be where it fell this is really stringy um, sheets for some reason I used in a 100% cotton with or a minimum of 50% cotton some of them shred well and some of them don't this one didn't but I love this color so I'm still working with it even though it doesn't not going quite so well um, I'm going to, you know, make sure you have a minimum of like maybe 18 inches to 2 feet um, and snip it off. And then you're going to take that tapestry needle that we talked about at the beginning and you see that, that nice wide hole. This was a number 13. And you're going to thread it. Okay, and then we're just going to hide. We're going to hide this tail. So I start off by maybe... Instead, so it will lay flat. I'm going to go this way, but then I'm going to weave down into it. So I'm going to kind of grab, just kind of find a way to go through it like that. And I don't like the way it's still got like a little bit of a bump there. So I'm going to go ahead and go one more time, kind of weaving in and pulling it across. You just go with what looks good to you, okay? There's no exact way. You could flip it over if you wanted, and you can finish it over there, which I think I am going to this time. Normally, I wouldn't. But see, I don't like that. There's an attachment there, and I think I can maybe hide that a little bit by this. Normally, I just work it in through here, the path of least resistance, and I follow a pretty good distance. But this time, I'm actually going to flip it over here and try to hide this. This is the only thing that was a little bit challenging with this, is because of that netting, sometimes you have to be careful because it pulls the netting and it makes a little frustrating part. So you just kind of find a place to um, follow along here. I don't want to go too deep because um, when I say deep, too deep because you're going to grab that netting and it's going to be a problem. So see I'm trying to see that kind of camouflage that a little bit. It's not perfect but now I'm going to try to go back in a little bit deeper into it and just kind of follow it along. I think it's important that you don't keep the scrubby going with it. When I kept the scrubby material, the nylon netting with it, um, I found that it backed itself out more. Um, and I was having a little bit of a problem with that. But if I did it without um, the netting attached at the same time when it was just the sheet yarn for the border um, or finishing it, it did quite a bit better. So there's... I do it a little differently when I'm doing a rug because I can go and hide it a little better but on this I don't feel like I can go too deep I'm afraid I've had problems with it grabbing so that's why you see shallow you might say well I would do this and I would do that and uh, I, I grin and giggle when I get some notes um, some people will say why aren't you teaching this way and why aren't you teaching that way well I'm an educator and I know some things are better techniques but if you're not in person with me with a back and forth question answer thing, it's too difficult to show you on video and I'll have video, I mean, note after note after note of people with questions. So I've learned to try to find an easier way to teach you so it's, um, when you attend a class, we do things sometimes a little bit different in a class, but uh, for sake of actually you learning something and being able to do it on your own, I really have that in mind so you can be successful. So we're going to try one more, but I've already got into the netting and it's starting to get difficult. I'll try to do one more. Let me show you how I do that. Let's see. 
See how you're gra I'm grabbing the netting and how frustrating that can be. All right, here's what we're going to do. Now I've kind of worked it across here and down here. I'm going to pull that tight. You pull it a little tight. Then you cut off. And then you give it a little yank and it slips in and you can't even see it. Okay? So there you've got your scrubby. It's not a perfect scrubby, but it really is a fantastic feel um, in the shower. And you could even add um, a wider piece of scrubby and you could do the circles or smaller ones and you can use them for dishes. I gave some for dishes, but I really like them in the shower, particularly if you're working in the yard. I live in Florida, so we spend a lot of time outside getting dirty and, um, you know, particularly around my ankles if I had um, a wider piece of scrubby. This is really minimal and so it's fine for your face and for your body and um, feel really comfortable. But, you know, stack them up and uh, make some gifts and surprise some people at work or do it with a young person. Um, and young people love to do things with you and to uh, get to make something and feel satisfied. Most people are so into technology now that uh, they're not doing these kinds of things. So maybe you can rekindle that in someone, um, a young person, and also spend some really quality time with them. And you might be surprised uh, the bond and the um, happiness that you bring to someone. Okay, thank you. Until next time.